shockingly large worms found in humans. Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're gonna to talk about tapeworms, some of these large tapeworms that have been found in humans. So let's get right into it. Tapeworm, or called flatworm, and according to the Guinness Book of World Records, in 1883, they found a worm that was 34.5 meters long, which is approximately 113 feet long. And about three years after that, they found one that was 72.5 meters long, which is about 283 feet long, okay? Recently in Thailand, they, they found one that was about 59 feet long, all right? So they're not going to find these large, large worms anymore because modern medicine will pick that up and people will go ahead and get antiparasitics and so forth. But the most recent was 59 feet, okay? So transmission is raw foods such as pork, beef, and freshwater fish. That's the typical route of transmission. Um, you can also get it from contaminated water and food. Lifespan of a tapeworm is approximately up to 20 years, and it can grow up to 10 meters long in the, in the intestinal system. Symptoms, unexplained weight loss, abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, and rectal pruritus or itching. So that's uh, most common symptoms. But there are other symptoms that people don't think about or don't correlate it to parasites. So let's talk about other signs. You can have B12 deficiency, creating anemia or macrocytic anemia, iron deficiency anemia, because basically these worms are living off your fuel or your nutrients. So they will deplete your B12, iron, cause fatigue, and then you can also get depression because of B12 deficiency. And it will be reversible once you take B12. It will be cognitive decline or brain function decline. You can also develop what we call paresthesias or numbness and tingling, usually bilaterally, both arms and legs or both legs equally. And you can develop paresthesias or what we call neuropathies. You can also develop a skin rash, itchy skin, okay? You can also develop bumps under the skin. You can get these little nodules under your skin. And that's basically the cyst form under your skin, and that's called cystocerosis. These worms can also create blockages or obstructions, like the appendix, the pancreatic uh, areas, and the uh, gallbladder area where the cystic duct, cyst cystic duct is. So it can create obstruction. And it's actually one of the leading causes of seizure worldwide, not in the United States. Uh, because they're not picking up these uh, large worms and um, their sanitary conditions are not up to par, so there's more transmission of these worms. In some countries, they like to eat raw foods, so that's when you get these transmission of these tapeworms. In the United States, there's approximately about a thousand cases that are documented in the uh, yearly, but it could be a little bit higher than that but worldwide it's a pretty common infection, all right? So let's get into testing. So how do we know if we have a parasite? One, you can think about those symptomatologies uh, that we talked about. Another way is to test to see if you have anything. Sometimes CT scans, MRIs, or ultrasounds will pick up the larger um, cyst formations, okay? Uh, blood, you can check for antibodies uh, to see if you have an antibody to a specific worm, in this case, tapeworm. And then you have CBC or complete blood count. Usually we will have an elevation of monocytes and eosinophils in the white blood cell count. And you can also do what we call a DNA probe or a GI map, or you can do a three-day stool pathology test to see if you can pick up any larval forms or cyst forms or eggs of the tapeworms, okay? So that's your basic ways to test to see if you have a parasite. Now, there are a lot of different types of tapeworms. There's one from beef, pork, Asian uh, variety. There's uh, one from fish. There's something called a dwarf um, 
uh, one that go, uh, goes from human to human. They're only about a one to two inches long. And then you have one from pet fleas. So there are different types of uh, tapeworms out there. The, the pork worm is the one that we talk about when you see these really, really long um, tapeworms. Okay. Uh, the tapeworms are typically segmented. So basically you have the head and then the segments will grow out and the segments will grow out in larger forms. Uh, it'll, it'll grow larger as it goes further away from the body. So you have small segments towards the head and large segments towards the bottom. And they um, can be quite long, not too thick, but long, okay? Now, there are medications obviously you can take uh, for parasitic infections like this. Um, there are three I listed right over here. Okay, those are the most common forms. It usually takes one or two days uh, to get rid of the large forms uh, of tapeworm or the live tapeworm. Sometimes these medications cannot penetrate the, these cysts and the cysts might persist. So that's where maybe herbal rem remedies might come into play. So when we do our, um, let's say, parasite cleanse, right? Sometimes we will do two weeks of repair of the gut. And the reason we will do that is because we want to prepare the gut lining for some of the herbs that will come after in order to kill off uh, the parasitic infection. So we'll do two weeks of gut healing uh, and gallbladder support in order to get it prepared. I'll link uh, some of the supplements that we utilize for the repair portion in here. And we'll also link the biofilm and the kill uh, supplements. So in order to break down the cyst and biofilm around some of this, the eggs and larva, you want to use enzymes that break down the, the outer layers. Okay? We use a product called Interphase, and you can also use a product called Biofilm Defense uh, from Kirkman Labs. So you have to break down the biofilm. Also, you can use woodworm, blackwood, uh, olive leaf, garlic, oregano, berberine. There are other products like uh, papaya seeds, pumpkin seeds, cloves, uh, grapefruit seed extract, and ginger. So you can use these in combination. Now, usually you take the herbal remedies that kill off the uh, tapeworm with, uh, without food, so on an empty stomach. However, if your GI is a mess, you may not tolerate the supplementation. So it's important to repair the gut. If you can't tolerate it even after repairing the gut, you have to take it after your meal uh, to help kind of coat the GI tract um, so you can actually tolerate the supplementation. So what I'll do is I'll put this kind of regimen and the products that are uh, associated with it in the description below. Uh, for some of you who don't know, we do have an online store where you can purchase high quality supplements. Uh, so you can um, check that store out in the list below. Usually with these types of regimens, it takes about 8 to 12 weeks. Okay, so you have to be consistent over 8 to 12 weeks in order to get rid of the parasitic infection. Now this is not just for tapeworm, it can also work for whipworm or uh, other types of uh, parasitic worm infections. Um, so there are many different uh, worm varieties out there. Uh, it can also help with things like H. pylori, so uh, it's very good to have um, know your symptomatology as well as testing and then look at the medication in combination with the herbal remedies. All right, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.